All right, Honors Algebra 2, welcome back. Uh, we are starting Chapter 5. This is the chapter you want to make sure you're watching every video and understanding what's going on. Uh, this is not, some of this should be reviewed, but it's a lot more in depth. So um, we're going to start with factoring. Now remember, factoring is when uh, we're trying to simplify things. Um, the first thing you should always do when you're factoring, the first step is should be to look for your GCF. So this is the first step that you need to find. All right, so let's look, and what that means is is something we can divide out of each term or pull out of each term. So if we look at all these terms right here in number one, let's look at the numbers first. We have 16, 8, 4, and 6. Well, the 4 is going to be our limiting factor here because we can't pull anything more than a 4 out of it. Um, however, we can't pull a 4 out of 6. So then we have to go down to the next uh, greatest common factor, which would be 2. So we can pull a 2 out of everything. All right, so I'm going to just put a 2 there. Now I look at my x's. I have x cubed, x to the fifth, x squared, x to the fourth. Well, the, again, the limiting factor here is this x squared. So, because um, I can pull an x squared out of everything, I can't pull an x to the fifth out of here. There's not enough x's to pull out or divide out. But I can divide out x squared out of all these terms. So I'm going to do x squared, and then y cubed, y, y squared, and y cubed again. Again, y to the first power is the only thing that we can take out because we can't divide this by y cubed. So I'm going to pull out a y. Now, you basically figure out what you're left with. We took a 2 out of a 6, so we have a 3 left. We took x squared out of x to the 4th, so we have x squared left. And we took a y out of a y cubed, so we have y squared left. Minus, we took a 2, so we have 2 left. We took an x squared out of an x squared, which means we are left with 1. We divided that out. We don't have to put anything there for the 1. And we took out the y's, so we again do not have to put anything there. It's just 2. Next terms, plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. Uh, x to the fifth divided by x squared is x cubed. And this turns into a y. Minus 16 divided by 2 is 8. x cubed taking out an x squared. We're left with an x. y cubed taking out a y. We're left with a y squared. And that is the answer. Nothing else you can do there. We pulled out the GCF. Okay, why don't you try number 2 real quick. Pause the video and then see if you get it right. Um, okay, so I see that I could pull out a 2. And actually, I'm going to pull out a negative 2 just because the negative is in front. Um, really, uh, you only want to pull a negative out to flip the terms inside or if it's the first term. We don't like the term in front to have a negative. So x cubed, x squared, x squared. I'm going to pull out an x squared, y cubed, y squared, and y. I'm going to pull out a y. I'm left with, when I divide by a negative 2, I'm left with a positive 2, an x, and a y squared. This now changes the sign to a minus for this part. Pulled out a negative 2, so it's 6. Pulled out an x squared, nothing. Well, it should be 1. y squared, uh, pull out a y, and you are left with a y. And then finally, I pulled out, now be careful here. I pulled out a negative 2, an x squared, and a y. Am I done? Is, do I just close the parentheses? No. You pulled out all of this, and so you should be left with a positive 1. Do not forget that 1. This whole thing turns into 1. Okay? So that's GCF. That's the first thing you should always look for. Now, the second thing we're going to be doing is reverse FOIL. This is when you are trying, remember FOIL is when you're multiplying two binomials together. Now you're going to try to get them back to those. Uh, you know you can factor um, something if the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, is a perfect square. For instance, let's just look at number 3 for instance. Remember b is the middle term, c is this number, and a is the number in front. So if I wanted to know what b squared minus 4ac is, I could do 64, because b is negative 8, negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15. Well that's 64 minus 60, or 4, and 4 is a perfect square. You can take the square root of 4. So that means you can factor this. So that's a good way to check that if you were wondering if it's factorable. All right, so here's what you do. Basically, this, is being, this has been multiplied out. Okay, This is a two binomials that have been multiplied out. So our final answer is going to be we want to get it back to these two binomials. And since it's x squared in front, 
it's going to be an x times an x for the first term. Now, you guys might remember this from when you did this a year or two ago. You want to look for numbers that multiply to these two. So multiply. That also add to these. Okay? So if you think about that, I have numbers that multiply to 15. I have 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Okay? And then I have the negative options also because it they both can be negative to get a positive 15. So I do that. Um, I look at adding to negative 8. Well, that means that I have to have a negative 5 and a negative 3. Negative 3 and negative 5 add to negative 8, and they multiply to positive 15. And again, all I did was reverse the process of foiling. If you want to check your answer, just foil this back out to make sure it's correct. Okay? So why don't you guys pause the video and try a couple of these. Again, first thing you should always do though is try to take out a GCF. There is no GCF to take out of here. There's no X term here. There's no number term here. So we can just go right to our binomial. Numbers that multiply to 66. Let's try how about 11 and 6. Okay. I need to get a negative 5 when I add those together. Um, so one of them has to be negative, one has to be positive. It should be the negative 11 and the positive 6. These add to negative 5. These multiply to negative 66. Number 5, we need to take our GCF out first. Uh, I believe you could take a 4 out of everything, and you can take an X out of everything. So I have 4X on the outside. This becomes X squared. This becomes 7X. And this becomes just 10. Okay. Now I can reverse foil this piece because it's just a uh, trinomial there with no coefficient in front. So two numbers that multiply to 10 that add to 7. Hopefully you guys can come up with 5 and 2. All right. Now this one here. This is one where you might think, okay, I need two numbers that multiply to 15. It could be 15 and 1 or 5 and 3. Are there any way to add these numbers together to get a negative 5? No. If you get stuck and realize that there's no way to factor it, or you do that b squared minus 4ac, so 25 minus 4 times 1 times 15, um, which is 25 minus 60, which is 35, not a perfect square, um, you realize you can't factor it. We call this prime. The reason why it's prime, it's like thinking of it as a prime number. Prime numbers can only be itself times 1. We can't factor or divide anything out of this, so it is called prime. And finally, number 7, we need to take out a GCF again. We can take a 5 out of everything and an x squared. So I'm left with x squared. I'm left with plus x. And I'm left with minus 6. All right, so the last step, we now need to reverse FOIL that. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to, um, add to uh, 1, positive 1. It's probably going to be 3 and 2 because we can get a, a 1 out of that if we uh, have one of them negative, which we need anyway to get a negative 6. And since we need a positive 1, the 3 needs to be positive, the 2 needs to be negative. All right, so that is reverse foiling using GCF and then reverse foiling. Now, when we get down to here, difference of two squares, all right? If you just have the first term and the last term, and it's a subtraction, difference, there is a pattern you can follow. And it kind of goes with thinking about this. If I multiplied x plus 5 times x minus 5 together and foiled it, you guys should see that these two go away and you're left with x squared minus 25. All right, so it's the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, plus and minus. These are called conjugates. We'll talk about that later. So basically there's just a pattern to this. What's the square root of x squared? It's x. This is going to be plus, this is going to be minus. One of them's a 5, the other one's a 5. So it's the square root of the second term, and then the signs are opposite. So let's look at this one here. We have a minus sign. We can take the square root of this. We could take the square root of this. The square root of the first piece would be 6x. The square root of the second piece would be 9y. 
and then we have the same thing with a minus sign. That is what difference of two squares is. Um, just be careful with that. Number 10, we have the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 16 is 4. Are we done is the question now. Hopefully if you're looking at this you realize, hey wait, there's another minus sign here and I think I can do the difference of two squares one more time here. Because I have x squared minus 4, I can take the square root of that and that. And you would be correct. We can rewrite this as, and we can't touch this piece because it's a plus, but this piece now becomes x plus 2 and x minus 2 because it's the difference of two squares. <laughs> Again, so this would be your final answer, this whole thing. That is it in complete factored form. All right, now, number 11, we first have to do reverse FOIL, but the problem is we have x to the fourth and x squared. That's okay, though. If you see x to the fourth and x squared, that's the same thing as seeing x squared and x. Just um, think of them as doubled. So you want to reverse FOIL this like normal. So I'm going to reverse FOIL this. But what happens is, in order to get an x to the fourth, these have to be x squared instead of x's, right? Because when you multiply x squared by x squared, you get x to the fourth. Now, this will also satisfy the fact that the middle term will be x squared. And we need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add to negative 1. Uh, hopefully you get 4 and 3, the 4 being negative, the 3 being positive. Again, that's, this is something you're just going to have to practice and see to undo that. And now we can use our new uh, difference of two squares right here and factor it a little bit more because this can be broken down just as we saw. x plus 2, x minus 2. And then we still have our x squared plus 3. And that is that problem. Okay, so difference of two squares is a very handy tool to use. The other thing we have is when we have perfect square trinomials. Perfect square trinomials are when you have, you can take the square root of the first term, you can take the square root of the last term, and this piece is uh, two times the square root of this term times this term. And what I'm saying there is, is basically if you have two binomials, and actually let's factor it by reverse FOIL, how about that? This is what you'll see what happens. Reverse FOIL. Two things that multiply to 64 would be 8 and 8, and then they both add to 16. Okay? So what this is is basically x plus 8, the quantity squared. That is a perfect square trinomial. It is itself twice. Um, and usually you get that, again, when you can take the square root of the first and last, and then uh, double the, if you double the uh, second number, that should be the middle term. So look at this to be doubled. All right, so this one we have x to the fourth. So right away we know this is going to be an x squared. And this is going to be an x squared. Now, 6 times 6 is 36, but we need a negative 12. So how about minus 6 and minus 6? All right, that should now work because these multiply to 36. These add to negative 12. We have x to the fourth. And then this will be x squared terms in the middle. And then you can rewrite it as a perfect square, or as a binomial, square of a binomial. That's called the square of a binomial. All right, and then finally, we look at this one. Same thing. We could take the square root of the first term, x, plus we could take the square root of the second term. This is 4y. And then we just double check to see if that actually happens again uh, when you multiply it out. You get x squared, you get 4y or 16y squared. The middle term becomes 4xy. The outside term becomes 4xy. And if you add those together, you get your 8xy. So that means that the perfect square trinomial here would be x plus 4y quantity squared. So always look for that. All right, last two. Factor by grouping and by u substitution. Grouping is basically when you have... Um, a piece such as this, we have this piece outside multiplied by a factor, x minus 2. And then another piece multiplied by the same factor, you can just factor that by grouping them. We have our x minus 2 still, 
But then we also have this piece and this piece. And this will be interesting to use later uh, when we're doing our um, splitting the middle term and factoring. I think that's tomorrow, actually. So you'll see how this, this grouping comes into play. So we have x minus 2. And then my remaining factor is 3x plus 7. And that's it. That's all you have to do for factoring by grouping if it's already set up for you. And then finally, u substitution. All right, this kind of looks like something squared plus 5 times something plus 6. Well, let's pretend that this x minus 5 part is actually equal to u. So we can make it look a little bit easier for ourselves. I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of x minus 5 squared, I'm going to say this is u squared plus 5 times u plus 6. Now hopefully this looks like something you can now factor using reverse FOIL. Two numbers that multiply to, uh, well, you just need a u and a u in front, so you get u squared. All right, two numbers that multiply to 6 that add to 5. Well, 1 and 6, it can't be those, so you have to use 2 and 3. But you're not done yet. You can't leave it in terms of u. You have to put it back in terms of x squared. Well, what is u equal to? x minus 5. So what happens is this subs back in. But the parentheses don't really matter because we're just adding and subtracting. So our final answer is x minus 5 plus 2 is really x minus 3 x minus 5 plus 3 is x minus 2. And this would be our final answer. So that is factoring by uh, u substitution. Okay, so these are all skills, hopefully, that you've done. Uh, if not, I can give you m many more to try in class to practice this. But you guys have to become factoring ninjas. So you can be awesome at the rest of the stuff we're going to be doing in this chapter. So hopefully you guys... Uh, understand this. If you don't, please ask questions and come in for extra help if you need to. Alright, then I will see you guys tomorrow.